It's interesting. Jimmy Johnson ran at Texas last week and, of course, is a part owner of the uh, Legacy Motorsports talked about the, where the owners stand right now negotiating with NASCAR to continue the charter system. And, and Zach, he said right now that he feels like the ownership's going to stick together on this thing, that they feel pretty solid. The contract on the uh, on the charters runs out at the end of this year. Uh, I think everybody believes something's going to work out at some point in time, but it's interesting to hear him say he feels like the car owners are going to stick together on this thing. It is interesting, but to me, it's not surprising uh, because we we've seen a lot of unity throughout this process, right from the RTA and their negotiations with NASCAR, with the tracks and all those stakeholders in whatever this process entails. So to me, it's no surprise to see that, but it is interesting to hear his perspective now because he is fairly new to this ownership game with Legacy Motor Club, uh, really just getting involved within the last couple of years. So um, it's it, it, the whole process will be interesting to see what comes out of it. But I very much am of that belief that something gets done much sooner than later. That's, that's the thing because, you know, Adam, we, we hear lots of rumors of how many charters, you know, could there be charters on the market? What, you know, well, if, if you don't know if charters are going to exist officially after this year, then who's, you know, what are you buying? And I think, you know, we, we, you know, we know for a fact, well, we don't know for a fact, we believe that, you know, 2311 would be in the market for another charter. At least track house could be in the market for another charter. Legacy motor club could be in the market for another charter. So, I mean, you've got these teams that apparently could be in the market for a charter, Nobody seems to know what the future of Stuart Haas is going to be. Their contract with Ford's up after this year. They've had some sponsorship issues. So, I mean, but I don't think you can have any transactions going on if you don't know what the future is. Here's the one thing I would say about all these negotiations and the owners, the ownership group sticking together. I would not argue against how competitive owners have been all time in NASCAR. I mean, you look at some of these business leaders, they are competitive people and it's that competitive edge that allowed them to raise to the level that, that they have reached on the business side. But look at some of the people that are now running these race teams, Jeff Gordon at Hendrick Motorsports. You got Brad Keselowski, you got Denny Hamlin. You talk about Jimmy Johnson, Justin Marks. I mean, I know Justin isn't a NASCAR champion, but Justin raced and he's a truly competitive guy. You've got all of these individuals that have experienced success at the higher levels of NASCAR, sometimes the highest, arguably the best ever, that are now going in and negotiating deals. Those are not the people that I would want to be on the other side of when it comes to competition. And, and if you get them together and they band together, um, it just stands to reason that, that they're going to be there to the bitter end to try to get out of it what they believe is truly theirs. And so th this process is going to be interesting, and I'm not near as deeply involved in the business side and, and don't have the knowledge that Zach would bring, certainly. Uh, but everything I have heard would indicate that these teams are going to hang together as they go throughout the process, and we'll see where it lands. And hopefully, hopefully we find common ground and get it done, and it, it allows the sport to advance in a very positive way. Yeah, I think everybody felt like once the TV deal was done that the rest of it would kind of fall into place pretty quickly. Obviously, Zach, that's not happening at this point. It isn't, but I think, you know, it's interesting because we are a couple of months into the season now, right? We got this TV deal announced back in December. I do feel like there are expectations that we will have some sort of news on this, whether it be within the next couple of months as we hit the summer stride, uh, maybe around the Olympic break, or... Maybe maybe it is until the toward the end of the season and things sh shake out a little bit more, right? Um, I don't pretend to know what's going on behind those closed doors. I imagine there's a lot of red tape to cross for sure, but uh, I think everyone is in this fight for the same reason, which is a passion and a love for NASCAR racing and its future health, right? And so... To me, there's no doubt that we will have a resolved solution sooner than later. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, another thing Jimmy Johnson talked about I found interesting, Adam, because we've really seen him struggle in this new car, and he did so again at Texas this week. It, he said he's had to learn, he's basically relearning how to drive a stock car because he said he used to lean on the right rear a lot and kind of dirt track it a lot. Well, now 
with this car, it's almost like you need to lean on the left front, and he just doesn't know how to. He's having to learn how to do that. You know, it's it was interesting the reaction that came from the booth on Sunday when Jimmy spun out, and even some of the challenges that he had faced in practice and qualifying. In listening to the analysis of Kevin Harvick, who drove this car, you know, the last couple of years, and most recently, obviously, last year before he retired, and just how matter of fact Kevin was in describing what Jimmy was dealing with. He, he wasn't taking a shot at him. He wasn't talking down to him. He was just very matter of fact in saying, this is really hard to do. And to expect him to come in and do this is really unthinkable. And I would say, even if we were running the same generation of car that produced all the wins and championships for Jimmy Johnson, is it fair to ask someone to come in and deliver at a successful level against the competition that's out there today when you haven't done it? any more frequently than what Jimmy Johnson has done it. No, by the way, you get 20 minutes of practice. And I know there's the simulator and all that, but nothing uh, replaces being out there with the other cars and doing it for real. So it's an enormous ask for Jimmy Johnson. I have a great respect for him to come back and and try to make it work and how honest he is in his evaluation of what's going on. But, But there's little doubt. If you talk to those who have done it, this is a very, very challenging car to drive and it's difficult for Jimmy to come back and just integrate himself right away and, and compete at the highest level. Zach, I've been around long enough that I remember when NASCAR got away from the bias ply tires and went to the, the radials and some of the guys that had the hardest time were the top guys in the sport. Dale Earnhardt senior had a hard time. A lot of these guys had a real tough time adapting to that. Anytime you change the platform that you're racing on so drastically, like we have from the gen six to this next gen car, it's it's a huge challenge. That's why Kyle Busch has struggled to a certain degree. That's why Chase Elliott struggled to a certain degree, as we talked about earlier. It takes some time to get out of the habits that were really successful in what you used to have and adapt to what you've got now. So far, we've seen guys like Kyle Larson, William Byron, really excel with that. Denny Hamlin has really impressed me. The more, the more time goes on with this next-gen car, the more I'm impressed at how well Denny Hamlin has been able to manage this transition to the next gen car him him and crew chief chris gabehart they've somehow found a way to perfect or at least get close to the field that they are looking for to be successful they've led literally every race so far this season in the cup series um so some guys are able to find that a little bit quicker than others it's a real big change and so it doesn't shock me that jimmy johnson has struggled uh to the extent that he has but at the same time I also know he's Jimmy Johnson. You know, we know what he's capable of, the work that he puts into dedicating time to get better at whatever he's he's done behind the wheel. So it won't surprise me as the season goes on. I think he's got seven more races behind the wheel of that 84 Toyota. And so it will not surprise me if toward the end of the season, he's in a little bit of better rhythm and more comfortable behind the wheel of this next gen car. It'll be interesting. Uh, I guess his next up is the 600, and we know that. Uh, well, he's actually doing Dover as well. He's doing Dover? He is. All right. That, that'll be there. a true measuring stick for him, right? He's, yeah. he's won there like 100 times. Like yeah, so well, he won the 600. How many times there? Yeah, that's right. Chad yeah. Canal said one time he could drive a washing machine around Dover <laughs> and, and have a chance to win. So 